Well, a very good friend of this program, former New England Patriot Matt Light. Matt, good morning. Good morning. Back in the saddle, baby. It feels so good. <laughs> uh, welcome back. Thank you very much. How is Mrs. Light? Uh, uh, a oof. everyday listener of this program, yeah. Susie Light. Yeah, she she's she tunes in, man. She's um she she stays current with all the things. I hear from her all the time with yeah. feedback on what we're talking about. Yeah. And uh, well, you guys cover a lot, and she you know she's she's a woman in the know, and okay. and uh, and and I, I'll say this: uh, we made a transition down to uh, Rhode Island, left Foxborough, and uh, bought a beautiful farm down there. A farm. Mm. Mrs. Light is um is now like you know she's out there doing a lot of gardening. She's digging up stuff. She's wow. weeding. Really? She we wears overalls. <gasps> she does. She, she oh. bakes. Uh, and I'm I'm not just saying this. Uh, probably the greatest sourdough bread <gasps> oh. in the world. Oh, oh she's a trad a wife. A what? Yeah. yeah. A, a, tra a traditional wife. That's that's trending right now on social media. What? I I want. A, could you send me her starter? For the sourdough, y'all, you know about this. You know sourdough. Oh, yes, yes. Oh, yeah. I want to get into Legit it. Starter. What is the trad? You gotta feed Matt, you. First of all, Matt's here to talk sports and football. Yeah. But what is the trad wife? Trad wife is like like ballerina farms is the number one trad wifer right now. And she she went to Juilliard. She used to be a, a ballerina, right. and her she and her husband own a farm. And she like she gets her coffee in the morning. She goes out to the farm, milks the cow into the coffee. Wow. Like everything is really is farm code? to table, it's farm crazy. to table. She has. Hasn't gotten her yet. I mean, <laughs> we, we have chickens. Would, you, chicken? like we, her, would you like her to milk the cow into, well, your, at, into at, your coffee? At this point, right now, she'd have to milk a chicken or a duck. Okay, right. that's what we have. Okay. Right. Right. and I, I don't know. According to uh, Mr. Fokker, you can milk anything. Yeah, yeah you great. can. You, anything. I got nipples. Can you milk me? <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, all right. Well, yeah. the trad wife. Right. Uh, yeah. uh, you have one, and congratulations on that. Yeah. I, I appreciate it. Listen, on the way in here. I was so fired up. I, I got to listen to one of the greatest songs. So, by the way, when you, when you become a Rhode Islander, driving to Massachusetts, even though it's like like eight minutes to the border, yeah. is almost like too much. Uh -huh. it, it, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I used to hear this, too. Like, oh, I got to go all the way to North Attleboro. I'm like, dude, you live in Smithfield. I'm like, that's literally seven and a half miles. But pretty easy commute this morning. Right. So I don't know what you guys report on the roadways. Uh -huh. Pretty pretty smooth okay. out there. And I listened to the great Philip Bailey and Phil Collins. Oh, Easy Lover? Yeah. Wow. That is a great song. She's a oh, yeah, that is, That's a great song. She'll get a hold we, on you, but I love Phil Collins. Well, yeah, speak, baby. Uh, love Phil. Speaking of getting a hold on things, hmm. is there any way to fix this offensive line when it comes to the New England Patriots? Uh, and, and by the way, at this point, who cares? I mean, I, and I'm, I'm dead serious. And, and I, okay, and I, I guess a little context on that one. Um, it, 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 you what are you learning? Like, like, what are your what are your listeners learning? Mm -hmm. Like, I, I'm gonna tell you this much: as a guy in in Wiggy, I, I know that you can't take this tack because you guys have to talk about things and you got to do stuff. I could care less about the preseason. I could care less about the preseason more today than ever before. There's nothing you're gonna learn. Look until the bolts fly for real, week one. Why even? I mean, look, I, I know, I know it's fun to see who they're rotating mm -hmm. and how they're mixing people in. I know it's fun to see what a a, a Drake May is going to do versus you know Jacoby Brissett. And I know there's all this controversy and and a new coach. That's great, man. But, but none, none of, of this matters. matters. None, none of it this, matters. This is like you and Wiggy mm -hmm. and maybe Tom Brady and others are. It's a it's a completely different thing than it was when you guys played preseason wise. Yeah, yeah, and but but I think fundamentally, like the problem is, and I and I, I feel like the the guy that's always preaching this message, but there is no possible opportunity there mm -hmm. there, and that's terrible English. There's not a there's no way in hell any of these guys are getting the reps they need. Mm. That's number one. You have to understand that, and that's so foundational. Now listen. If you're a wide receiver, if you're a DB, if you're a skilled player, where most of your time is running around on the field, mm -hmm. you can get yourself in pretty good shape, right. okay? But if you are anywhere near the trenches, if you're a, a tight end, if, if you're an outside linebacker, if you're a down lineman, both sides of the ball, there's not the ability to get yourself in football condition at all, period, end of story. So what you see year in and year out are a lot of injuries, a lot of injuries. Think about it. Go back 
over the last, just say, three seasons and look at the number of guys, and not just Aaron Rodgers. I mm -hmm. mean, obviously, there's big names, but this happens on every single team all season long, major injuries. Why? Because they're not in shape. Why? Because they can't practice. Why? Because the rules literally prohibit them from doing the one thing to get them in shape. <laughs> and, oh, by the way, they also can't line up right. They also can't just do the fundamental things from a from a you know mental aspect because they don't practice. It's a big problem. Yeah, and, and we've talked about that a lot as far as you know the physical part of the game changing and the mental part of the game. Guys don't prepare. I, I was saying this the other day that there are a lot of guys that are playing in today's football because this was all over the about the tour thing that could not play in our era, before our era, because of coaches, when I started was Bill Parcells. Like, mentally, they're not strong enough to handle the stress. By the way, Jelani Tavai is probably listening to this right mm -hmm. now saying, old old man's yeah. screaming at clouds. I am screaming. With the two of you guys. Yeah, I am definitely right, doing he's, that. He's going to join us in a minute. And he's probably saying, yeah. here's, here's, oh, great, Light and Wiggins. When did they play? In the 70s? Yeah. Yeah, yeah but you know, here, here's the thing, right? So... On one hand, if, if you're a listener, you could be saying, okay, well, yeah, these guys are doing something like that, or they're saying that these guys aren't tough. That That's not at all, man. I mean, look, if you walk in these locker rooms today, you're going to see a lot of tough guys. These guys, you know, um, uh, there's, there's nothing that would prevent them from playing back in our time other than the fact that they literally cannot do it. The league created rules that don't allow them. So if the league were to go back and mm -hmm. say, hey, you know what, we did make a – we made a mistake. Okay, the reason we did all this is so we could get our 17th game. We all know that now. Right. And the reason that we – by the way, dead serious, end of story. The only reason that, that coming out of the 2011 CBA uh -huh. that they made the change that they did was because of player safety, health, and wellness. Well, <laughs> obviously that's not true. The game's less safe today than it's ever been. Mm -hmm. So it was clearly all about the 17th game and probably getting the 18th game. And, hey, by the way, free market society guy, yeah. go out there and make as much money as you can because everybody wins. The player's getting paid more now. Mm -hmm. But – the game is terrible. I, I'm in favor. No more two, real two days. <laughs> I'm in, I'm in favor of the 18th game because we get the Monday after the Super Bowl as a yeah. holiday. That's why I'm in favor of it. It All wouldn't right. change for us, so it doesn't really matter. Um, Matt Light is here, and you you can hang around for a while, right? You're, you're, I'm, I'm in it to win it, my friend. Okay. All right. Um, right now, because it is a Patriots preseason Friday. We are joined by Patriots linebacker Jelani Tavai, and he is brought to you by Shaw's and Star Market, perfecting the art of fresh, and by findmassmoney.gov. Hey, Jelani. Hey, what's up, man? How y'all doing? Well, we got a couple old guys in here. Some more old talking. Heads. They're talking about how you guys, you're not mentally tough and you're not physically tough. I think, <laughs> I think is what... I, I, Don't take the bait, man. Don't yeah. take the bait. Uh, yeah, I think that's what I was... Uh, I think that's what I heard. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, you've been... I, you know, I, can, uh, I, I can agree to disagree, but, you know, I don't know. Yeah. Well, I mean, listen, you've been doing this for a while I now, so... I can do you, speak for myself. What's that? <laughs> I can only speak for myself, and uh, I don't know. <laughs> do you, well, do you, I mean, from a preseason perspective, do you feel like you get what you need to get out of it? Oh, um, I would say yes and no. I think, I think that um, over here in New England, we, we do a great job on making sure that the toughest days are, you know, are during practice. Um, so I think that, you know, when I was listening in and hearing about the conditioning part, I feel like most teams don't condition like we do, um, and I'm sure uh, all the guys who have played here in the past understand that and understand that they were here with Bill. They know about the hill. They know about the the, the late practices where we have to condition uh, even after a two-minute drill or something. So, you know, like I, I, love, I love the way that we practice because they do, um, you know, somewhat get us ready for the games. And we have to prepare that way during practice and make sure that we put ourselves in the toughest situations that way that when it comes to the game time, we know how to manage and how to make sure that we're ready for those, you know, those fast drives where some teams will go tempo or, or you know, late in the fourth quarter. So I feel like we do a great job here at practices that way that when, when game time uh, does come, we're prepared and ready for any type of situation, whether we're dog tired or not. 
Hey, Jelani, Matt Light here. Listen, and and as a former player rep, man, you got to be real careful talking about those late practices <laughs> with Bill. I mean, clearly that doesn't happen with Gerard. I mean, you guys, you know, you're, you're adhering to the the overall yeah. time frame, and you, know, you guys are off the field when you're supposed to be, not doing anything crazy. I, I get it. I get it. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, with the with the wink, wink. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Jelani, one of the things, one of the things that I, you know. I try to look at, and it's hard because, you know, yeah, we are old men who are not in the locker room no more. And one of the things that I look at is the preparation and how guys prepare on their own. Are they studying the film? Are they looking at the film? When you start to look at some of the younger players as they come in through college, do you feel like they're in a position where you see a lot of um, – self-preparation rather than only preparation when the coaches are, uh, are there telling them, hey, watch some film, do some studying? Uh, I, th I think it's a bit of both, but I've, we've been we've been getting the right guys so far on who who cares, you know. Um, so a lot of the younger guys will pull us aside. And I can only speak on the defensive part because I'm right now, you know, during training camp, we're really just with our position or with our groups. Because we don't, uh, you know, the offense ha has their own schedule, to, and you know them, they meet, they meet all day. So, um, yeah. so I would assume that they're taking care of business on their side. Uh, so on the defensive aspect, though, uh, we do have the younger guys who do care, who are asking uh, the vets on uh, about technique or how they see things on film, um, and then, you know, uh, they need to do that first of all because. They're already they're already months behind us um, on the playbook on how it is to be a vet and or how it is to be just a NFL player. So I would I would expect them to do that and and luckily uh, they have been. So I mean so far it's been it's been good. I mean of course you're gonna have the strength like the the guys who will do their own thing, but an overall aspect I think that we have the right guys as. Uh, we're talking about our younger guys. Yeah, you know, listen, you hit on a good point. Um, it, defensively, right, when, when I think about training camp, you guys read and react to things, right? That, that's what you do, right? You, whatever the offense is, is showing you, yeah. you have to, you know, find a way to, to read and react in real time, right? So naturally, in, in training yeah. camp, the defense is typically ahead of the game, right? It's tougher for the offense to get on the same page. You know, you're trying to execute plays and run routes to the right depth, all that kind of stuff. And with a, a new offense and with new guys and a, a new head coach, I mean, I could, I could see where in training camp, you guys are definitely ahead of the game defensively when it comes to practice, back and forth, right? What what I think, though, is, is interesting is, you know, look, not that long ago, we were able to hit back-to-back -back days, right? And I don't – maybe I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. I don't think you guys can hit back-to-back -back days. And, you know, I think it takes away from your ability to really get yourself in football – shape right and I know you don't have to hit to be in football shape necessarily from just that standpoint but do you feel like you know you can go out there and in training camp put yourself in the in the best position possible and and maybe you can't answer this because you, you weren't in the the era of when we did hit like that but do you feel ready to go week one physically I, I think I, I feel ready to go week one uh uh, I mean, this past week we've we've had what I think I think we went two or three days straight with full pads, and it was a pretty physical day for everybody. And we were, I think, uh, <laughs> definitely everybody was getting angry with each other because we were just trying to. I think we were just trying to dominate the offense. So um, I think practices, you know, I think you have to put yourself in that situation, whether it's. You're in pads or not. You have to you have to create the low pad level um, like mindset where you have to as much as you don't want to like stay low like whether it's a block whether it's a tackle or or you chasing after the ball at, in open field you have to put yourself like in in kind of a game reality situation. You know we got guys like I don't know you got if you guys seen the video of uh, Pep when he was mic'd up, but when we were in pads, this guy practices the same way. He'll come over. Hit the guy with with his shoulders, get extension, and then fall off, and then tag off on the on the running back. But his pad level never changes, you know. So a lot of the younger, like when you have a guy like Pep, and you know, I hope I see myself when I when I practice, I do the same. But when you have a guy like Pep, 
who does it repeatedly, and and you have the younger guys who watch him and and you know look up to him because he is a, he's a big role model for our younger guys. A you know time. that um, that you you know that 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 feeds off of everybody on the defensive side. So I think that guys just have to understand that when we don't have a ton of live periods or live practices, you have to put yourself in the situation where you can imitate. Um, like like how you would play in a game. Uh, a lot of talk last couple of days about Tyquan Thornton, how he looks. Have you seen an improvement there? Hell yeah, he's 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 having a really great camp. Um, I'm really excited to see how he performs uh, Sunday, and then um, we'll see where everything goes after that. Jelani, I'm closer to your age than these uh, old heads sitting with me. So I always find it interesting when people say, you know, oh, especially when it comes to Drake May, you know, he wasn't prepared right in college the way that the college game is played. He's not ready to go out there and play a live game in the NFL. Do you think at some point people just need to give more credit or, or put more respect on Drake May's name and say, wait a minute, he seems calm, cool, and collected out there. Why don't you throw this kid in there and, and get the reps as soon as possible? Um, yeah, I mean, I, of course, I, like, I always give people their flowers, but, you know, Drake, Drake's going to have to prove himself, too, you know, uh, he, it's his job to make sure that, you know, everybody who's hating on him or doubting him, he's got to be the one to, you know, prove him wrong, you know, so, um, I, the way that I see him working and the way that I see him approaching each day, I think that, um, you know, as the weeks go on, I think that uh, he'll, he'll have a great opportunity to, you know, prove those people wrong. Fine. Speaking of proving people wrong, final preseason game Sunday, you guys head into the season underdogs in every single game. Is that something that you as as a vet and a leader can and this team can use going into these games? I don't mind being the underdog, man. I've been, a, we've been the underdog my, like I've been the underdog my whole life, and I love it, you know, because uh, when when teams, you know, think that they can roll over on you, it's the best type of game to come in and just smack them in the mouth, you know. So um, I'm excited for the season. Um, I'm excited for Sunday. So I don't know who's playing or not, but if we we do get the opportunity, I'm going to take full advantage of each rep that I get and and just make sure that I'm. Uh, I am ready for the uh, week one to come. You know, I, I got to make sure the old heads over here listening know that we're ready. <laughs> yeah, we're, 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 we're yes. trad players, right? We're trad yes, players. Yes, you yeah, are. Trad, yeah, yes. trad players. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we are the old heads. See, Jelani knows trad. Yeah. <laughs> all right. We are the old heads. Yeah, they both played with leather helmets. All right. Okay. Yeah, uh, all right, Jelani. Listen, good luck oh, Sunday. I did, I did too, but just a bit. <laughs> I definitely got to play with a leather head, but just in a different sport. <laughs> <laughs> All right, listen, uh, go get them Sunday, and mm -hmm. we'll look forward to talking to you a week from today as we get ready to start the season. All right? Perfect. Y'all have a wonderful day. All right, there he is, Jelani Tavai. He's the with, nicest guy. Uh,